everyone, um, Dr. Amanda here and I'm here with Matt Gross and he's going to tell us about a really interesting paper that he's been working on in regards to going concern. So I saw this paper, um, I mentioned it in my This Week in Audit uh, vlogs and so now I've got Matt on to actually talk about it. So Welcome. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, tell us, tell everybody out there what you do. So I've been doing some research into the audit market in Australia, and our recent paper has found that at the end of the year, when an audit an auditor comes in to audit the financial statements, if they issue a going concern opinion, the share price of the company drops by about three percent on average. And a lot of researchers have looked at this in uh, prior literature, and they've found these results before. What we've done new is we've also looked at when the auditor comes in halfway through the year and conducts the interim review. Now in your audit class, I'm sure Amanda's taught you about the difference between an audit compared to a review. Yes, And hopefully the, they remember. <laughs> and in the review, the auditor does a lot less work. It's a, it's a much lower level of assurance. So we've looked at if investors actually respond to the uh, auditor's conclusion in that interim review. And we found when the auditor issues a going concern conclusion, Again, the investors actually use this information and the share price drops by about 3%. So this is actually really important because it shows that what an auditor is doing, the reports that they're issuing to the public, investors are reading this information and they are responding to it. They're realizing there's more risk in the company than they might have pre may have previously thought about. Awesome. So that's really interesting because often students wonder about you know, what's the value in the audit? Does anyone read it? So we've got a clear signal here. Um, what sort of companies did you look at when you were collecting all this data? So in Australia, we looked at the uh, largest, about six to 700 largest firms in Australia. The reason we looked at the biggest companies is because when they receive a going concern opinion, it's really big news. A lot of the smaller companies in Australia, the exploration companies, they get a going concern opinion every year because they don't actually have any profitable operations. So we wanted to look at the big companies that mm -hmm. actually have profitable operations so that when a going concern opinion is issued, it's actually big news and investors should sit up and take notice of that one. So we had over 600 companies in our sample and we looked from 2007 all the way through to 2015 and we looked at every company's annual report and half yearly report as well and read through their audit opinions and audit reviews. In this period, was, was in that period the subprime global yes. financial crisis? Yes, so this was a really interesting subsample to look at. In 2007, 2008, there were a lot more going concern opinions actually issued and this shows the system works. When there was higher levels of risk, the auditors were actually picking up on this mm -hmm. and letting the investors know that there was a lot of risk in these particular companies around this financial crisis. What was really interesting in our study is when we looked at the interim reviews, this is after the six months into the year, there was a lot more going concern conclusions issued in the interim report. We found this really useful and as an Australian we found this was very uh, informative for us because a lot of other countries around the world don't require the auditor to release a report on their interim reports. Ah. So what we found is actually really interesting. In Australia, the auditor has to release their audit report mm -hmm. after the interim financial statement, so after six months. In America and the UK, it's actually voluntary. Ah. So companies get to choose if the auditor's six month report is actually released to investors. And in America, for example, only about 5% of companies wow. actually release the quarterly audit review reports. So investors in America during the financial crisis might not have received that early warning that Australian investors were able to receive from the auditor six months into the year. In Canada, they do things very differently. The auditor and the company are prohibited from releasing the interim <laughs> review. So they think that because there's a lower level of assurance, they don't want to scare investors with this report halfway through the year. Mm -hmm. So they're actually banned from releasing this information. That's really interesting because I guess with the interim, you're getting that lower level of assurance. So I guess as the auditor, you probably it probably is even a bigger issue if you pick it up at the interim than if you actually report it at the end of the year because you're looking at much less information. So to be able to make that still that judgment that yes, there's an issue or less information is probably even more important. Yeah, uh, we, we completely agree that if you're finding something, a, a problem when you're not really looking for it, that could be really big news for the investors. Oh. And we believe that's why it is actually important that investors do receive this half yearly audit review report. 
And in other countries, such as the US, they don't receive this information, and that could potentially lead to investors not having a full uh, information picture of surrounding the firm that they're investing in. So what's, what I have a, a question about, and probably what a lot of students will ask, is that quite often management will say, oh, if you give us the going concern, um, not qualification, but that in that emphasis of matter, you know, that's going to be the downward spiral for my company. I'm not going to be able to recover from that. Um, do many companies receive the going concern, um, emphasis of matter, and then actually close, or do most of them turn it around? We found this really interesting because we found that a lot of companies received a going concern conclusion halfway through the year, but then they were able to turn things around by the end of the year. So there are a lot of observations where a company might have received a going concern conclusion halfway through the year and then fixed things by the end of the year, or vice versa, they received one at the end of a year and then six months later in the interim review, they didn't receive a going concern. So there was a lot of variation within six months of companies maybe being in trouble. It could have been a financing issue. Mm -hmm. And then within six months, they are able to resolve that. And so what does the market do when that happens? So this is even more informative than just looking at if there is a going concern conclusion, looking at if there's a change in the going concern conclusion. So if you have a deterioration in that in your previous report, you did not receive a going concern conclusion, and then six months later you, you get, get a going one. concern opinion in your annual report, then that's much worse news than getting the same opinion each time through. Oh. So opposite situation, when there's an improvement, halfway through the year you received a going concern conclusion, and at the end of the year you didn't receive a going concern opinion, that's actually good news, and investors re uh, respond to that in a positive way, and the share price will actually go up in those situations. Fantastic, yep. excellent. Well, really interesting information there from Matt. I will make sure I put a link on SSRN to your paper, which Thank means you. anybody can download it free. Um, and I presume it's going to be published somewhere. Hopefully. Fingers it's crossed. It's in the publication process. So <laughs> in under the review. publication under process. Review, yes. Well, we have all our fingers crossed for you. And Thank I you really want to thank you for uh, speaking to everybody today. Thank you very much. If anyone has any questions for Matt, um, I will make sure I leave his profile so you can contact him um, or you can contact me. If you've got any questions about going concern opinions, pop them in the comments and I'll get to them in another video. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Amanda.